It's winter time, ladies and gentlemen, and despite it being very cold, I gotta keep my jacket open so that you can see the awesome t-shirts I wear as well. So, um, don't be like me when you're out. Zip up your jacket. Hello and welcome back to another episode of What You Miss News, the video game news show where I cover the articles that came out this week that might be important to you and the video game industry at large. See, we're a visionary company here at uh, Grandmaster Gaming Incorporated, and even though my name might be Proto Mario, I assure you I am the Grandmaster Gamer. So, let's jump into the news, and the first story that I do have is talking about how there's a new Pokemon trailer for a new Pokemon movie. This is, um, this is kind of like a uh, falling into the Call of Duty trope here, where there's a there's a new Pokemon movie uh, assuredly going to be coming out. It's not like other movies where you're like, ah, that was a good movie, uh, I hope they make a sequel. No, basically you're gonna see another Pokemon movie after this one, and after the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, because it's never gonna end. It's a machine, it's an engine, but they're not always that bad anyway, so I guess that's something to aim for. The animation style and the art style changes Ash Ketchum, and a lot of people are predicting that it's going to introduce a new legendary Pokemon, or um, this generation's hidden legendary Pokemon, kind of like Diancie was the last uh, generation's hidden Pokemon, or, you know, you can consider whatever you'd like to consider, but you get what I'm saying. But here's the thing, with this trailer, somebody has decided to Photoshop Ash as a woman, as a girl. And a lot of people really enjoyed it, but there's there's a lot of people photoshopping this and changing things. Like I've seen one where Pikachu was pink on her back, and it just completely changes it um, from what it originally looks like. It, it's cool. I like the photoshops, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to them changing Ash into a woman just as kind of a spinoff role. It would be a really nice spinoff series to have Ash as a female character at one point in time. Do I think that'll ever happen? Absolutely not. Japan is Japan, and the developers are the developers. So, with that, we also have live-action Pokemon movie Detective Pikachu set to release in 2019, specifically around May 10th. That might get pushed back, that might get pushed up, I don't know, but that's what they said about that. So that's the Pokemon news, ladies and gentlemen. We're moving on to World of Warcraft. I don't really talk about World of Warcraft a lot, but there's a lot of World of Warcraft players. And they say, one of the top World of Warcraft guilds state that a uh, member has DDoS'd teammates to get their raid spots. Now this is um, this is exceedingly pathetic, and uh, I think it's it's really depressing that somebody does this. Basically, this individual was uh, set to go into a raid. It, there was a healer, and before the raid, there was an individual that was consistently saying, "Hey, click this link, click, click this link, please, please, please," begging people to click the link. So when somebody did click that link, they instantly got DDoS dropped out and this person took their spot so that they could raid with this top tier um, World of Warcraft guild. So it's really depressing to see people do that, especially in video games. We already have problems with video games, ladies and gentlemen. There's definitely a stigma out there and I'm gonna talk about that in the next story, but man, don't, don't contribute to the stigma. Which relates to my next story, the StarCraft foot heel won't be cowed by angry brands. Essentially, the long and the short of this is that there's quite a few angry Angry brands, um, angry at the individual who won that StarCraft tournament with his foot. You guys remember I covered that story. Really crazy, man. Um, now, there's more to this story than what you might think. That individual did, after winning the match, uh, attempt to apologize to his opponent immediately, but his opponent wouldn't hear it and called him trash and then started smack talking him for his foot victory. Now this is all this is all this guy's fault, okay? I'm not going to deny that it isn't the guy's fault for winning with his foot, okay? Did he break the rules? No, there's nothing in the rules that say you can't win with the foot, but subjectively speaking, this is unsportsmanlike. And a lot of the sponsorship deals assume that you're going to be a sportsman contender. You aren't going to rub victory in the face of the person who loses. At the end of the day, this individual has refused to apologize now 
And even though these brands are asking him to apologize, they threatened and said that if they don't apologize, if this individual doesn't apologize, that they will be banned from events, which is one of them being the big one, Zotech. If you guys don't know Zotech, they make graphics cards and they do do events. They're on the PC side of things and they make really good stuff, man. Shout out to Zotech. But I think it's important to have uh, sportsmanship in in esports because esports is considered a joke for most people. Even though it's massive, it's growing, and, and you see tournaments with real money being made. You walk on the street, you walk down the road, and you talk to someone about esports. They'll laugh in your face if you try to convince them that it's a real sport. That's how it is. There's a stigma in gaming, and we don't need any more stigmas, man. You have to be on your best behavior. You know, it's just like with football players. You don't see football players committing really heinous travesties against their opponents when they beat them. They shake their hands, and they congratulate them on a good match. They don't sit there and talk smack over Twitter to each other. I mean, some of them do, but then they end up with massive fines. You know what I'm saying? So, um, if you don't feel like paying millions of dollars for being unsportsmanlike, Please, please control yourself when you're playing these video games. I know it's difficult, man. Real tough to control your rage and anger when you're playing video games, but do try. So uh, Mario Kart drivers in Japan are going to soon be required to wear seatbelts. This isn't really a massive thing, but I mean, they, they're just going to have to wear seatbelts and other safety features and stuff like that. So if you go to Japan, you can basically rent these Mario Karts. And if you really wanted to, you could dress up like the Mario people. But apparently, you know, you don't have to. You could just drive these cars and that that's about it. So that's cool, but at the same time... It's kind of crappy that you're gonna be forced to wear seatbelt, maybe a helmet, maybe uh, other things and like that. Uh, that's what's going to end up happening, ladies and gentlemen. So, a new uh, Ready Player One trailer is filled with video game, anime, and comic book characters. Uh, I disagree with this story. I've watched the Ready Player One trailer. A lot of people are hyped and ready for it. I gotta tell you, I'm not ready for Player One. Now, I'm not, I'm not that that dark and cynical that I'm gonna say everything good is is terrible and find the flaw in every single thing but I'm just not feeling this trailer I've seen very little references to video game characters anime characters they're there but see I'm I'm, I'm a prominent believer of the 20-year cycle ladies and gentlemen I talked about that in my last video why it matters the 20-year cycle for video games and other fads and trends and I feel like this is really playing to the 20-year cycle uh, because back in the day we had movies like The Wizard, you know, which which was supposed to be this big video game movie, this big video game tie-in, and there was barely any video game references, and when there were, they were 100% wrong. Movies have come quite a way since then, there's no questioning that, but I'm still seeing very little reference to video games in Player One. This is more a unique and original story crafted around video games with video games tied in instead of being about video games mainly. It, it's really about a kid rebelling against corporate greed and things like that. If you want to check out the trailer, you can check it out. I haven't looked into it too deeply, so I'm sure there's going to be people who will correct me. Feel free to comment down below. I, I, I have no problem with that. I'll link the trailer down in the description below. Capcom wants to port more games to the Switch that were previously not available on the Nintendo consoles. There's not much more to this story. Um, I, I don't know what they would consider games that weren't originally available. Not available. Hey, maybe we'll get uh, Mega Man Legends 2. <laughs> just, just kidding, guys. Don't, don't get your hopes up. See, hey, seriously, don't get your hopes up for Mega Man Legends 2. And definitely don't get your hopes up for Mega Man Legends 3, but if they are going to make a collection pack, that would be really amazing if they came out with Mega Man Legends 3 and then put Mega Man Legends 1 and 2 and sold it for $60. Oh my god, man, that would make my day. Uh, anyways, if you see some games on other previous systems that weren't available on Nintendo consoles, you can kind of assume that some of them are going to come to the Switch. You could probably base that on their sales and their popularity, so there you go, you have your answer. Street Fighter Collection bundles 12 games in 1-2 release. The 30th anniversary is going to include quite a few Street Fighter games. I'm going to throw them up on the screen instead of stay saying them all. But uh, 
pretty much is going to be the 1987 original through Third Strike. So you're not going to get Street Fighter 4 or 5 or um, some of the side entries or puzzle fighters. This is just the main Street Fighter series from what I said there. And you, again, you can look at the screen and there you go. That's what you're going to get. A decent value. There's no questioning that. But for me personally, I'm a light fighting game enthusiast. All I need is one Street Fighter game. It doesn't have to be anything special or amazing. That's all I need. I, I don't need all of these Street Fighter games. So I don't know. Maybe you feel the same way. It's kind of like a racing game. You give me several iterations of a racing game. I'm going to play the one that's decent and, and that'll be that'll be that. So, um, we made some mistakes. Bungie backtracks on locked Destiny 2 content. This is, there's no question that this is going to come out. Um, you know, with the Battlefront 2 debacle and how EA's not really listening to the audience that well, it's nice to see that Bungie is listening a little bit more. Uh, subjectively speaking here, I don't think it's enough, uh, but they are taking it back to where even though the DLC is out for Destiny 2, Everything that was available in the vanilla game will be again available to vanilla players almost okay So you can you can look at the details here again I will link it in the description below if you're a big destiny 2 player. There you go Kojima has explained death stranding gameplay and lore and the original trailer Essentially, it is what I thought it was that somebody uh, kind of went to hell like when you die you were going to hell it's not that fully what ends up happening is if you die in death stranding you go into this ocean and that happens every single time but because of the um, protagonist's main ability a, a special unique ability they can die multiple times and death is not the end for them like in video games kojima explained that death has been similar you get a game over you go back and start over again but in this one you actually bear the scars of death and the effects of the world around you are what ends up happening so if you die in death stranding you die but the world around you is still affected so it does not restart you back before you died instead you can go find objects laying around things you might have lost and then return to your body and wake back up so there will be a lot of craters essentially is what he's saying and if you've seen the trailer you know what that's talking about super mario odyssey player beats uh beats the game without a uh, jumping I think uh, I think you might have missed the point of uh, Mario. Mm. You know he's called Jumpman, right? <clears throat> well, maybe his father was. Essentially, you can beat Super Mario Odyssey without jumping. There's a video out there explaining this. This guy streamed himself doing it, and it's 100% confirmed because when you get to the end of the game, you get to go talk to Toadette, and she will tell you how many times you have jumped. Now, one of the weirdest things about this, though, is that if you talk to an NPC, that counts as a jump, believe it or not. So what you essentially have to do is bounce off of Cappy's hat, then talk to the NPC while you're in air before you land because the game itself does not register uh, a jump if the NPC talks to you or you talk to the NPC in the air because what ends up happening is that when you press the A button it talks to the NPCs. Now there's two theories on this. One, that when you press the A button it counts it as a jump. Two, that when you press an A button it counts as a, as a jump but it retracts it and, and tries to figure it out but it still counts it as a jump essentially. So there's a lot going on with the theories. You can check that out and there you go ladies and gentlemen. That is this episode of What You Miss News. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed giving you the news. Um, if you did, please make sure to like and share this. If you didn't dislike it and offer me some constructive criticism I would like to give a big shout out to the Sun. Uh, thank you once again for proving me right in that uh, before I recorded, there was no sun whatsoever. And as soon as I popped the camera on, you literally saw the sun come out. So there you go. Shout outs to the Sun. You're, you're a real OG out there. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I hope to see you here back next time. I've been your host, Pony Mario. I'm signing out. Once again, really appreciate you coming. And uh, as always, good gaming, God bless, and enjoy some video games. I'll see you uh, next time.